Hello everyone, once again welcome to another vlog and today I am here at the Nalanda University Ruins which is believed to be one of the oldest universities in the world and of course one of the premier institutions in India. If you have read the history books you will definitely know about this place because all the top notch politicians, all the top notch kings, rulers, their princes studied here and also it was one of the premier institute for preaching Buddhism. Unfortunately, it was destroyed, burned down and later on it was excavated by the Archaeological Survey of India and right now it is the UNESCO World Heritage Site here in Bihar in Nalanda and today we are gonna take a look inside the ruins of this famous university which was a part of the Magadh Empire and it was located somewhere south to Pataliputra which is again a very famous empire back then. Um, the year I guess was around 70 BC, I don't remember. Here I am accompanied by my sister Srijita once again and let's go and explore the ruins of this famous and top university in India. Nalanda was established during the Gupta Empire era and was supported by numerous Indian and Javanese patrons, both Buddhists and non-Buddhists. Over some 750 years, its faculty included some of the most revered scholars of Mahayana Buddhism. Nalanda Mahavihara taught six major Buddhist schools and philosophies such as Yogacara and Sarvastivara as well as subjects such as grammar, medicine, logic, and mathematics. The university was also a major source of 657 Sanskrit texts carried by pilgrim Zhuangzang and the 400 Sanskrit texts carried by Yi Jing to China in the 7th century which influenced East Asian Buddhism. So right now we are at the spot which is supposed to be either a MOOC court where students were taught law, justice, courtyardship and um, you know, what is it called? Um, practicing justice. Right. In front of the king. So as you can see here there were many seats allegedly where all the ministers used to sit and there's a kind of the throne over there. This is the throne room where people would be brought in who are suspects and then they would be tried here. The other possibility is that it might have been a kitchen or a place with two large ovens which might be used for either community cooking or for some sort of practical laboratory work or practical experiment. Now we have no idea what sort of practical demonstration would go on here with such huge ovens. It is up to you to guess and make any sort of speculations. How Nalanda got its name is still a big mystery. According to the 7th century Tang Dynasty Chinese pilgrim Xuanzang, the local tradition explains that the name Nalanda came from a Naga serpent deity in ancient Indian religions, whose name was Nalanda. Hiranand Shastri, an archaeologist who headed the excavation of the ruins, attributes the name to the abundance of Nalas or lotus stalks in the area and believes that Nalanda would then represent the giver of lotus stalks. In some Tibetan sources, including the 17th century work of Taranatha, Nalanda is referred to as Nalindra and is likely synonymous to Nala, Nalaka, Nalaka Grama found in Tibetan literature. Religion was a major part of the studies here, of the curriculum here at Nalanda University and we can see that from this sort of structure which looks like a temple and even the note here from Archaeological Survey of India states that it's one of the temples out here with many different shrines and 
carvings. has a lot of beautiful art and architecture. It is supposed to have had those. Now it's all One of the key takeaways that I can understand is that Buddhism was definitely one of the primary religions studied over here because there were many monks st staying over here. But do you think that Buddhism was the only religion that was practiced or talked about in this particular university or there was a more secular approach to the things over here and different religions like Hinduism, Jainism also found a place in this university um, it could have been uh, the case that other religions were also taught about it would have been a wonderful thing to think about um, i do not see though any uh, marks of uh, other religions being taught but it would be great if that was the case it's definitely difficult to decipher from the ruins but maybe the historians could make out the main meaning of these sculptures and carvings many of those are recently made i would say yeah. or remade you know from the patterns that are here they have followed it and maybe reconstructed yeah, and there are a lot of buddhas here yes At Nalanda, there were thousands of students studying here at one point of time and most of them were monks and they used to live in these sort of small rooms or chambers as you might call it here and these were the places where they used to live, where they used to study. This is also another monastery as they call which has, as you can see in the central region, a courtyard over here where they used to practice all the court matters and then on the other side there were other small amenities in the middle it is said that there was a shrine depicting the study of religion and their religious aspects of Nalanda University and their curriculum and there is something very special about this particular chamber or this particular monastery and that is the height of one of the rooms just in front of us here has been preserved to its original height so you can see the lentil here of, or the door height it is the actual height of the room that used to be there all those years ago every other room has lost its height and therefore we don't really know the height of the rooms but this one here has been renovated but as you can see right over to on the top here this was the original door ceiling or the lentil and therefore we can get an estimate of the height of the rooms or the chambers where the monks used to st live and study the students so yeah this was the pretty much height of this particular chamber my height is around 5 11 close to a 6 so you can imagine this is around 7 or 8 feet high.
Nalanda was the premium institute of ancient India and as you can guess a lot of subjects were taught here. The top subjects which we can understand from the remaining texts and scripts are philosophy, politics, science, mathematics, logic reasoning and probably astronomy as well. There were students from many walks of life, kings, their sons, princes, princesses, everyone used to study here with the commoners, the sons of priests and warriors and they used to study different subjects so a very multidisciplinary approach combined with study of Buddhism, religiousness, righteousness was the style of Nalanda University which actually made it such a great institution to get educated and by the end of the course everyone went out or graduated from this institute as an able human being with the right set of qualities, the right set of education, information, ready to face the world, ready to get on with their own career. So this was the place where such great education system thrived in ancient India and therefore it is oftentimes uh, talked about parallelly as with Takshashila or Takshila as it called one of the greatest universities or learning institutes in India, Takshila and Nalanda both goes hand in hand and therefore India or ancient India is so great, so famous. A vast amount of what came to be known as Tibetan Buddhism, both its Mahayana and Vajrayana traditions, stems from the teachings and traditions at Nalanda. The scholar Dharmakriti, one of the Buddhist founders of Indian philosophical logic as well as one of the primary theorists of Buddhist atomism, taught at Nalanda. Other forms of Buddhism such as the Mahayana Buddhism followed in Vietnam, China, Korea and Japan flourished within the walls of this ancient school. A number of scholars have associated some Mahayana texts such as the Shurangama Sutra, an important sutra in East Asian Buddhism with the Buddhist traditions at Nalanda. Several Buddhist institutions overseas have chosen to call themselves Nalanda to acknowledge Nalanda's influence. These include Nalanda Buddhist Society in Malaysia, Nalanda College in Colombo, Sri Lanka, Nalanda Buddhist Education Foundation in Indonesia, and Nalanda Buddhist Institute in Bhutan. Unfortunately, Nalanda University is so huge, even the ruins is covered in such a massive area that it is impossible to cover everything in a single day. We tried our best, but it's too hot and now it's time to go back and yeah, that's it. That's the conclusion of this tour of the ruins of Nalanda University. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you want more information, go check out the link that I I'm putting it here you can also find the link in the description below go check it out and learn more about this top-notch university in ancient India so that's it from me and my sister Srijita we bid you farewell and we will see you again soon in a brand new video till then like this video if you enjoyed it comment your favorite part share it with your friends and family and stay happy and stay healthy See you.